Hello again YouTube, it's John the Old Geek and it's time for yet another AD&D module review. The subject of today's video is the module I3, Pharaoh, which was published in 1982. This one was written by Tracy and Laura Hickman and was for character levels 5 to 7. It was uh, given the module code I3 with the I being short for intermediate, intended for mid-level characters. And levels 5 to 7 were generally seen as being the sweet spot of AD&D gaming. Those being the levels where the characters were no longer incredibly fragile, but were not yet superhero-esque. I3 is the first part of the three-part Desert of Desolation series. The next two being Oasis of the White Palm and The Lost Tomb of Martek with all three later being expanded upon and repackaged in the Desert of Desolation Super Module in 1987. Pharaoh was the first module written by the Hickmans to be published by TSR, the Hickman name being one which would endure and go on to shape the nature of many a D&D adventure to come. They had previously published their work privately, but when TSR saw it they not only bought the adventures, they hired Tracy Hickman to be part of their team. Most adventure modules up until now had been highly location based. Some had overarching plots, though in most cases these were either secondary to the action or consisted of nefarious schemes that the PCs had to foil somehow. In the Desert of Desolation series, the PCs are expected to be the unwitting cause of the plot and thus get placed centre stage to try and undo their mistake and save the world. Now if that sounds clumsy and somewhat heavy handed, well, that's because it is and this approach would define the Hickman style of adventure writing for the rest of the decade. It was a style that placed story above convention, expected the adventurers to be the heroes and rode roughshod over the game mechanics in many places. There is a general lack of freedom in this writing style and that was to go on to be uh, heavily showcased in the Dragonlance series, a series of modules I have quite a low regard for, though I enjoy the setting, I think the modules themselves are poor. Now as alluded to by its title, there is a heavy Egyptian theme to Pharaoh. C1, the Hidden Shrine of Tamerchan, was an earlier adventure which was similarly based on a mythological theme, so this was nothing new, and Tamerchan did the aspect much better than Pharaoh, which cannot compete in terms of the level of research and attention to detail. But much of that detail would not come into play in C1, so such niceties would only really be appreciated by the DM. Certainly, I doubt my players notice any real discernible difference between the two modules in terms of their appreciation of the relevant mythology in each case. The idea of this adventure is that the party are forced to go into the desert in pursuit of some unknown band of raiders as punishment for some misdeed that they are alleged to have done. They have no say in this matter, they're not told what that misdeed is, and they've got no opportunity to, to defend themselves. Already, this introduction is a mess. A party of level 5 to 7 characters forced to meekly accept a punishment for something they know nothing about, and given the state of typical guards, the party would most likely be able to take them on quite easily. But they're not allowed to. They have to accept the punishment. It really is as daft as that sounds. They are then given supplies to help them survive the desert and there's a list of rumours to give them to some clues as to uh, what lies ahead. This was a popular feature of modules of the time. The rumours I mean, not the uh, stupid introduction. Once in the desert itself there are a number of key locations along with a selection of suitably themed and mostly challenging random encounters. The intention is that the plot of the adventure will initially be revealed by two main encounters a ghostly pharaoh and the discovery of a sunken city. It's actually not much of a city, just a few partially buried rooms. But while investigating this city, their inquisitiveness will get the better of them and they will unwittingly unleash a great evil upon the land. This immediately throws up a problem. What if they miss this encounter area? Now, as written in the module, it's quite easy for them to miss it. What if they don't bother to investigate it? OK, so on the two occasions I've run the module, the party have behaved precisely as the adventure expects, but the possibility is there for issues to arise. Player characters are quite notorious for doing the opposite of what 
they're intended to do. More clues dot the adventure in the form of inscriptions. The idea being that the party decipher these and combined with the encounter with the ghost of the pharaoh, they should begin to realise that they need to find a series of star gems in order to be able to deal with the evil being that they have set free. It's all a bit of a muddle, and Hickman's inscription translation mechanic doesn't help. He assigns a fixed percentage for the PCs to be able to read each one, but this is often vital information. It's a bit crap, to be honest. I typed up each passage, downloaded a hieroglyphic font, and converted them to this font. Then I handed each inscription to the players as they found them, thus the emphasis was on the players to decipher the clues themselves. The more inscriptions they found, the easier the puzzle became. This approach to me is infinitely more satisfying. The bulk of the adventure takes place inside a pyramid though first they have to get past a group of mad zealots in order to gain entry. And it is inside this pyramid that the adventure redeems itself with a wonderful dungeon crawl. This is AD&D adventuring at its finest now, and at its most traditional, which is slightly bizarre after the writer's clumsy efforts to get the party there. It is very much worth the wait though. The labyrinth is packed with traditional enemies, imaginative tricks and traps, and is very challenging, and is a lot of fun for everyone, especially the maze, which is absolute genius. Again though, there are issues, and it is to do with the writing style. Some of the box text is poorly written, there are typos, and several sections are very badly explained. What on earth is a shabang man? That's one of the creatures that Hickman has made up for the adventure. There's no description of it. It's simply got its name there. Chabang Man. Shabang Man. Don't know how you pronounce it. Don't know what it looks like. It doesn't even give you a clue in the adventure itself. There's an encounter with a paladin. But no name. No description of her equipment. And no logical way she would have survived to where she is with her supplied statistics. The dervishes are listed as having four hit dice yet many have fewer than four hit points. Is four hit dice simply an effective fighting level, or just an example of Hickman ignoring game mechanics? What armour do they wear? None of this is specified. Still, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Even though it grated a little with me as DM, it didn't spoil my player's enjoyment in the slightest. Presentation in, in this adventure is very much a mixed bag. The cover art by Jim Holloway is absolutely superb, one of the best cover pieces of any first edition module. Internally however though, his whimsical and somewhat comedic style feels out of place. He was to go on to illustrate the satirical RPG Paranoia with great success, his work being absolutely perfect for that game. Encounter locations are neatly broken up into box text with sections entitled Play, Monster, Trap or Trick, Law and Treasure, and this system of dividing up the relevant information mostly works very well. Though there are editing issues with the text, some of the monster's stats are very lazily produced, and Hickman's writing style can be very grating, as he doesn't explain things very well at all. Maps are barely adequate. The tomb and temple maps are half decent, but the wilderness map itself is terrible. It's too small, both in terms of scale and presentation. It's supposed to be a vast desert, but it isn't. Now, with this adventure taking place in a mere quarter of the entirety of the Desert of Desolation, they can cross the entire desert section of I-3 in just a couple of days, and yet they are supposed to be condemned to roam the desert? Doesn't make any sense. But, for all its faults, Pharaoh is a highly enjoyable romp. It takes some time to get going, and there's some very awkward moments, especially early on, but once the party reach the meat of the pyramid, they're in for a roller coaster ride of classic dungeoneering. It would, however, have been so much better, in my opinion, if Tracy Hickman had sat down with one of the established module writers and let them deal with the actual nuts and bolts to properly translate his ideas into AD&D terms as the overriding feeling is that he just didn't care for the game mechanics or expectations. 
I would love to see what someone like David Cook, Graham Morris, or even the great Gygax himself would have done with this material. I give Pharaoh a very solid 7 out of 10. It's a myriad of great ideas from a fertile imagination, all cobbled together in a cumbersome way. It just needed a competent writing and editing team to make them gel and iron out the wrinkles, and then it would have been an absolute classic. It's still very good. I mean, the fun to be had in the pyramid allows for forgiveness of the module's numerous faults, but only just. Well, I do hope you've uh, enjoyed this review today. Um, as always, click like, subscribe, comment, help me out in the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, good night from the old geek. <laughs>